Hularu was a dependable man. He worked six out of seven days every week in the Cross Mountain Mine. Two miles deep, an opening at the head of Slate Stone Hollow near Bryceville, Tennessee, Cross Mountain Mine was a big operation. The year was 1911. On the morning of December 9th, a Saturday, he pulled his boots on and stoked the fire in the kitchen stove so Mrs. LaRue could go about preparing breakfast. Meanwhile, around the coal camp, the other miners' families were stirring to life. This time of year, with its short winter days, the miners only saw sunshine one day a week. That's Sunday, the day of rest. The remainder of the week, the men were underground while the sun was overhead. This particular Saturday morning started like every other day for most of the miners, but for Hugh LaRue, the morning was starting nothing like usual. You see, Mrs. LaRue, generally a reasonable and level-headed woman, was having a fit. She had awoken even earlier than usual, startled awake by a gruesome dream, which left her lying awake in bed and drenched in sweat. She dreamed she saw scores of miners with their heads blown off being carried out of the mine while she and her children stood at the mine's mouth. But Hugh LaRue was a dependable man. He did not miss a day of work nearly a year, and even then it was only for one day when his youngest little boy came into the world. Mrs. LaRue was a good woman, but silly dreams would not pay the bills and put food on the table. Besides, cross mountain mine was a modern operation, not some water-soaked mule mine. Electric rail cars traveled the main entry and electric fans kept fresh air breezing through the mine. He was lucky to have the job he had instead of being stuck in some gassy hell pit. If this woman would not pack his lunch bucket, Hugh by heck would just fix his own. At 7.30 in the morning, 160 men usually boarded the man trips going underground, but this morning there was a problem with the rail cars and only one trip entered the mine, and it was less than 100 miners on board, while the other miners waited at the entry for the trip to return for them. Just after the workers were inside the mine, there was a roof fall near the entrance. Some of the miners walked back to see what had caused the ruckus. What they did not know, nor have a reason to suspect, was that the fall had opened a fissure into the belly of the mountain, where a pocket of methane gas lay trapped. The seeping death spewed out to greet one of the open flame carbide lamps worn by the miners. The ground shook underfoot a mile away. Back in the coal camp, Mrs. LaRue relived her nightmare of the evening before. Oh, Daddy, don't go to the mines today, for dreams have so often come true. Oh, Daddy, my Daddy, please don't go away, for I never could live without you. This was the first test of the recently formed mine rescue team. Eighty-nine men were trapped underground and despite the fact that only five were eventually brought out alive, the team's efforts were deemed a success and encouraged trained rescue groups which are still active today performing admirably when called upon. Several of the miners died in the explosion in the resulting cave-ins, but several more barricaded themselves into the side rooms where they clung to life until breath was leached out of them by the poison gases and meager oxygen supply. Alonzo Wood and Eugene Alt walled themselves off in a room where they had water and air enough to last for several hours. But eventually they were overcome by the dreaded after damp, which is a combination of half-burned coal dust, methane, and carbon monoxide. Eugene Alt 
chalk the last message on the wall of his tomb. There is not much now. I'll be good, and I aim to pray to God to save me and all of you. Tell Clarence to wear out my clothes. Give Bessie Robbins a stick pin of mine. Tell her goodbye. Clarence was his brother, and Bessie Robbins was his girlfriend. About 50 mules lived inside the mine where they were used to tow the coal cars from the side rooms to the main rail line. They perished that morning. 84 good and reliable men died that day too, fathers, sons, and brothers all. They never found the body of Hugh LaRue in the Cross Mountain Mine. In an attempt to pacify a nagging woman, he stayed home that day. It saved his life. of trials and 